a little bit about what uh, what, what it is I do. What it is you yeah, do. Yeah. Um, so I'm playing tenor saxophone here. Um, maybe the most famous pop saxophone player is Clarence Clemens, and so that's uh, the saxophone player for Bruce Springsteen. And he's an enormous man, and I'm a very small person. <laughs> so my big duty as a pop saxophone player is to say, well, how do I make my sound enormous like Clarence Clemens? So he's really famous for this kind of ah, quality, this kind of growl to his playing. So, um, you know, when you listen to a saxophone, like for my solo on um, Weatherman, you know, I say, and that sounds, you know, reasonably good. But if I was Clarence Clemens, it sounds more like, so what's the difference between those two? So. Um, what I'm doing is I'm actually singing along with my playing as I'm playing. Oh, so really? if you go, ha, 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 I mean, I'm not always that accurate because you don't need to be super accurate. He wasn't. So it's, it often comes out a lot more like, ha, 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 and you see it'll sound totally different. So, or, ha, 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 ha. so that's how I create that growling sound on the saxophone. Did very cool. Yeah, thank you. Which is very, right. uh, very appropriate for this tune. So, Preston, how uh, how do you like to go go about miking the sax here for? Um, what we found that uh, we kind of had him play and just put our ear around and listened, and it turned out about the best angle was pull up, um, uh, about a forty five facing down at his first fingers there. Um, you see a lot of people try and put it in the bell, and that just generally doesn't really get that great of a tone. Um, <laughs> Because so, all the sounds coming out of the yeah, top the here. sounds are coming out of the holes here, you know, yeah. along there, and so that's really where you're getting most of the tone. And we found that at the angle, you got a little bit less of the breath noise, and so. Uh, that and one of the, the one of the other things we should talk about is how we double the horns a lot, and uh, it's often useful to um, record them from different positions in the room, so you don't uh, have uh, issue with uh, phase canceling. Yeah. Otherwise, what goes on is um, you, it sounds almost like there's like a flanger or a phaser on uh, the trumpet you hear really prominently in sax as well. So, so we'll have Max stand right there, and then he'll move for his doubling take to different position, right, right there in the room. And maybe he might stand a little further, a little closer. He maybe play with a uh, little different. Uh, strengthen his lips so that it sounds like a different player. All those things help to get rid of some of that phasing that you hear. And uh, talk about these mics one more time. These were the same ones we, same ones we did the trumpet with, yeah. is that right? Yeah, and these are DPAs, and again, they're something, they just have a very natural uh, sound quality to them. And uh, cool thing about these little guys is that they actually have dual diaphragms inside here. So you usually don't see a pencil condenser with two diaphragms. Um, but uh, DPA came up with this and they sound fantastic and um, despite it being uh, long you can see a lot of the different ports on here that would usually signify like a hypercardioid or a supercardioid pattern but uh, this is actually a cardioid you can tell right there right and um, the rear ports actually help make the cardioid pattern despite um, the usual convention so kinda cool